There's Hollywood's version of a battle gone bad. There is no escape. Ow. And Hollywood's quick fix. Then there's reality. Tennessee. Jesse Sullivan of Dayton lost his arms to a power line. Current prosthesis, even the state-of-the-art prostheses, are so inadequate that people typically don't even use them. They're not lifelike at all. They have only what we call two degrees of freedom. They have an elbow, and the hand is essentially a pincher. But fantasy might be getting closer to reality, thanks in part to work underway in Michael Goldfarb's engineering lab, research that's part of a multi-site program called Revolutionizing Prosthetics. The objective of this arm is to make a very human-like, highly functional arm that is uh, hardwired into the human nervous system. Goldfarb's specific task is to create the inner workings of a bionic arm. It is intended to do anything that a human arm can do, to have all of the functionality, all of what we call the degrees of freedom, so all the joints in the hand and the wrist and in the elbow that a normal human arm would do. But more importantly, perhaps, or as importantly, it will have all the power. So it will be able to move with the same kind of forces and the same kind of, at the same kind of speeds as, as a normal arm. But don't think of it as a device similar to the six million dollar man. After all, Steve Austin had superhuman powers. And, and Hollywood and the movies give the impression that robots are superhuman strength, have superhuman strength and force. That's actually not the case at all. It's the complete opposite. Robots are incredibly weak and underpowered This version of a bionic arm will have 21 joints that can move, a big improvement over the current prosthesis, which only has two. This arm will have the agility and power to pour a glass of water or pull Kleenex from a box. R really, that is a, you know, a significant part of our contribution is to bring to this program a paradigm shift in, in power. If you look right now at the best actuators, the best ways we have of moving robots, they are underpowered, relative to human muscle, they're underpowered by a factor of five or six at least. I mean, you can't have an arm that is six times the size of your normal arm. Uh, nobody would accept that. So Goldfarb and his crew's search simple. for a new power source has led hey, them to time. rocket it's, fuel, yeah, a hot simple. gas. Okay. All right, well, let's run it again and, and, uh, and see. And the testing that we did shows that we are 10 times better than the best, uh, what we call state-of-the-art robot actuators. So we're getting much closer to humans. But the first tests are running using cold gas, in this case, nitrogen. That gas runs through two lines. One goes to the elbow and the other to the forearm, then to the wrist and hand. The gas then flows through computer-controlled valves moving into cylinders which act like muscles. This you have, for instance, on each of these cylinders you have these wires coming up. These are force sensors and actually embedded in the joints which you can't see, we have uh, position or motion sensors. So that force and motion information is fed back to the computer. The computer combines the sensor information with the commands coming from the strapped-on exoskeleton device to control the valves. Throwing a ball becomes a simple task for this bionic arm of the future. When we run it off of cold gas, it has to be tethered to a bottle of gas, which is really too big to put on the arm. When we run it off of hot gas, we can uh, uh, put the liquid propellant in uh, a small cartridge, which fits on the arm. This research video shows that small cartridge in action. It turns from a liquid to a gas just by coming in contact with some little pellets that we have. It's called a catalyst. So we have a very small tube of pellets and when you flow the liquid through those pellets it turns into a gas. The steam powered by the rocket fuel will even release moisture similar to sweat once a skin-like material is added over the bionic arm. How far away are we from seeing this device tested in humans? Goldfarb says the target date for getting FDA approval for clinical trials is 2009, 
and that's good news for war veterans. The body armor technology has gotten much better since Vietnam. Which, so what that means is that there are far fewer uh, fatalities, uh, but, uh, but more amputations relative to Vietnam, I think twice the rate that they had then. That fact has led the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency to pump more than $30 million into the development of the new prosthesis, with Vanderbilt getting almost $3 million. Uh, high five. The first woman to have a bionic arm side by side with the first bionic man, and both okay. were beaming. But researchers like Michael Goldfarb are working to make bionic arms like this one even better. And maybe, just maybe, this time Hollywood's version of a happy ending can come true for thousands of amputees. <laughs>